All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Good afternoon. Good morning. Wherever you're joining from, I greet you. Uh, my name is Akin Oladeji. And I'm the founder of Learn with Pride. Uh, Learn with Pride has been going strong for going to four years now. And what we do is to assist those um, that wants to transition into the tech space, regardless of your background, regardless of your educational or uh, work background, you know, uh, we help you to transition successfully uh, by holding your hands all the way. So we run courses ranging from project management, business analysis, software automation, DevOps engineer, data analytics, and Scrum master. Um, so that's what we do. And uh, today we'll be running, uh, going through um, a general overview of uh, software automation testing. Um, this course will be starting on Saturday, next week, Saturday on the 4th of February, uh, just for the benefit of those that wants to join and don't really know much about what it entails or what you are going to get on the journey. Um, this is just to enlighten people so that you can be able to know what will be at stake when you join the course. So let me just tell you a, bit, uh, a brief uh, background about myself. Um, to start with, I'll be the one taking this course, um, this particular course. This is the only course I take. I facilitate this myself. Uh, so you can be rest assured when it comes to the quality, you getting the quality out of it. You can be rest assured of that. Uh, all right, so quick uh, intro about myself, uh, just to tell you that uh, anybody with determination, with, you know, uh, I can do attitude, and you know what you want. Uh, whether you know about programming language, whether you don't know anything about programming language, you can do it as long as you set your mind, you know. Uh, I transitioned as well. I transitioned. My background was accounting. Um my first degree, I even have masters in accounting as well, you know. But I was tired of what I was doing. I needed a change badly. Um, I stumbled upon software automation, you know. And I asked that question. I don't have any technical knowledge. I don't have any technical background. Am I sure I will be able to cope on this journey? And the reply was, you know, if you are determined and so there, there shouldn't be anything stopping you, you know. So I rolled on the course. Uh, it was like, I think, three months course as well back then. But there wasn't any kind of support. I had to do most of the work myself, a lot of sleepless nights, you know. But to call the long story short, after two weeks of me finishing that course, I secured my first role. And not only as automation engineer, I secured my first role as senior automation engineer. This was someone that just completed a three months journey, a three months training, you know? So, and now it's, it's all a story today because I don't only work in that field. I train other people as well, you know, uh, to become like me because I understand what it takes to take someone from point A to point B. And that's one of the benefits you are going to get on the journey. So on this brief overview, it shouldn't take us that long. I'll be taking you through, if you are to enroll on the course, what would be the roadmap? Um, what, would the, what would be the roadmap? What are we going to be doing? Um, the course outline and um, we take questions, you know, if you have any questions you want to ask, you know, I'm all here to answer the question. So, yeah, let me start uh, quickly so I don't waste your evening. All right, so why software automation, right? Everybody knows what testing is, you know? And we have like two types of testing. We have manual testing and we have automation. Many people will argue that, oh, before you can do automation, you have to, must have, you must have worked as a manual tester. That is a lie from the pit of hell, you know, that is not true. I had no 
manual background. I had nothing, no background. And I jumped straight in into automation. Because even for an automation tester, you still have a bit of manual testing to do. Okay, so why testing? Why software automation? I'm, I'm sure everybody will be, we all know what testing is, you know, any functionality. Take, for example, whether you are browsing on Next or you are browsing on any website you go to. Those are functionalities uh, like you are adding uh, items to, to basket, you know, those are functionalities, you know. And before those functionalities, if you're working in SDLC, Software Development Lifecycle, before those functionalities can be deployed into live environment or production environment, live, on, live or production environment are the environment that you and I as end customer can see, can go and browse and shop for things. Before any functionality can be deployed into live environment, it must have gone through the process of testing. It has to be manually tested and passed. You know, so you need to test it manually. What are you checking when you are testing it manually? You are checking for defects. You are checking it whether uh, it meets the acceptance criteria as written by the BEs. You know, you are checking that it's fit for purpose. You know, and when the manual testing is done, that is when the automation can start. But before you can start the automation, manual testing has to be done. You know, and has to be passed as well. Um, so why software automation? Um, because manual testing is becoming so uh, saturated now. Everybody can, almost everybody can do manual testing. It doesn't require any technical skill per se to become a manual tester. So it's become more and more difficult to secure your role as a manual tester, just that there are loads of people out there who can do a manual testing role. You know, that is why when you apply for a job, you see like 200 people has applied, 250 people has applied, which narrows down your chance of being shortlisted for that role. But when it comes to automation, and you all know uh, when something is a bit difficult, especially for we Blacks, we tend to back off because we believe that, oh, I can't do it, you know, and that is where the money is, you know. Because many people are backing out that, oh, it's C sharp, oh, programming language, oh, no, 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 no. I can't do it, just leave me, let me just continue with my manual testing. So many people are backing out, not knowing that that is actually where the money is. So when you're talking about highly paid, I'm using uh, UK as an example. But this is applicable everywhere. Whether you live in Nigeria, whether you live in the UK, whether you live in Ghana, it doesn't matter. You know, the average salary in the UK is around 45,000 for permanent. But if you are considering a contract rule, then you're looking at 350, 400 a day. If you're getting 400 a day, that is like 8,000 pounds per month. Even if the contract is for only three months, three times three, uh, 8,000 times three, you know, that is a lot of money in three months that you can earn. And since after, since post COVID, you know, uh, it has make it even much more easier for regardless of where you live, regardless of your location to secure a remote job. You can be in Nigeria and secure a remote job for a company in Canada, for a company in Australia, you can be in Ghana and secure your role uh, with a company in, you know, um, Canada, Switzerland, anywhere, you know. So location, it's not a problem when it comes to roles like this now because you can work remotely any part of the world uh, that you are. And in the UK, um, it's one of the shortage of skilled worker in the UK as well, meaning uh, you can be in your local country, whether Ghana, Nigeria, Zimbabwe, and start applying for uh, a role in the UK, a sponsorship role to so companies that can give you a sponsorship visa in the UK. And if you are, if you, if you are good enough, if you are shortlisted, you went through the interview and they like you, they'll process the visa for you. 
that's another advantage that you can get out of it course. But before you can place yourself in such a situation, you know, you must have acquired the knowledge. You must have acquired the skills, which is very important. Uh, without the skills, you know, it's it, it, you just, you'll only be wishing like uh, the lottery. Oh, it's 200 million Naira. Oh, I did been I played, you know, but you never played and you have to be in it to win it. So for you to be in it, you have to secure, you have to go through, you have to acquire the necessary skills, the necessary knowledge that will set you apart, you know, and put you in that position whereby you too can compete for competitive salaries like that as well. Uh, I've mentioned uh, you can work remotely anywhere in the world, is in high demand. And what would be the training roadmap? um if you are to enroll what is it going to be like so that let's go through that one by one the first one is the training the training is for eight weeks um it's once a week for eight weeks many people will ask me oh are we going to be able to cover much in that eight weeks yeah you'll be you will cover loads you know because this is hands-on practical training this is not a theoretical training you know it's hands-on practical training so uh, the training is going to be for eight weeks. It's going to be uh, once a week for eight weeks. And I'm the one that will be taking you on the journey. Um, and as I said, I've been through, uh, I've been in your situation, I've been in your shoes as well. So I understand what it takes, you know, to want to transition from, you know, either your background was accounting just like me or customer service or you know whatever whatever uh, your background is i understand because i've gone through the same process um and you know i can take you from point a to point b based on my own knowledge as well um after the training comes the project so all in all it's a three month process just that the training the practical training is just for eight weeks. The project is whereby you'll be put in a scrum team. You know, there'll be a developer in that team. There'll be a scrum master. There'll be a product owner. There'll be yourself testers. You know, there'll be product designer. You'll be work as part of that team to bring a solution to life. So any functionality that gets developed during the sprint, you know, you, it will come to you for testing. If it passes the manual testing, then you can start your automation as well. So uh, that's the project. So you are getting hands-on experience. And I tell you at the end of this three months, if you commit into the process, because yes, I, might, I can say the training is once a week, but it is, not a, it is not once a week for you. It is an everyday affair for you. Because for you to catch up with anything that we do in class on a Saturday, uh, you need to commit at least two hours into the process every single day because tasks will be given. And before the next journey, you must have come, you need to complete those tasks. You need to go over my videos again. You need to reward, you need to make mistakes. You need to call out for help because you can only learn when you make mistakes, you know? When you make the mistakes and you call on me, oh, I'm struggling here, I'm blocked, I don't know what is happening. Then we do it together. The process of doing it together, you are learning. Next time, if you face with the same issue again, you know how to resolve it. And that is how you learn, you know? So the project will expose you to how things are done in an agile setting, you know? Uh, it will expose you to agile rituals like daily stand-ups, sprint planning, sprint refinement, sprint retrospective. All these things you go through during the project phase. But as I said, all in all, the, the journey is for three months. And, you know, it's going to be... It's going to be demanding. Uh, it will require a lot of sacrifices. You need to let go of certain things for that three months. If you are the type that likes watching uh, Nollywood or Netflix, that needs to stop. Visual Studio has to become your Netflix for the next three months. 
If you are the type that, you know, you like going out, that might have to be reduced because we need to make a sacrifice to get to where we are going, you know, without the sacrifice. Because at the end of that three months, I want you to be in a position whereby you can compete with those who have been doing it in the industry for two, three years. For that to happen, you need to invest your time into the process. As I will tell my students, your input at the end of the day will be equals to your output. It is what you give into it that you take out of it. I might give you all the platform, give you all the necessary uh, tools to succeed, but if you don't make use of them, then it will be of no use at the end of the day. You know, this is an ants on practical uh, training and projects. It's not a Sunday, Sunday affair. It's not a once a week. Once a week, we not cut it. Twice a week, we not cut it. It has to be an everyday occurrence, at least minimum of two hours every day devoted into the process. Then, um, so the training is done. You've gone through the project as well. You know what you are doing now, you know? Uh, but if you are not visible in the market, nobody will employ you. Nobody will see you. And if recruiters cannot see you, then you're not, you not going to get any calls. If you don't get any calls, you're not going to get any jobs. That is why this step on the roadmap is very, very important as well. Optimization of your brand. Your CV needs to speak for you. Your LinkedIn needs to speak for you. And as we all know, LinkedIn has become uh, a professional marketplace where recruiters go to now and, you know, scout for people, you know? So you need to be there. If you don't have all these things, these two things I've mentioned, or you think your CV needs optimization or your LinkedIn, uh, your LinkedIn needs optimization or your CV needs revamping, uh, we partner with one of the best in the market as well. Um, their name is Career Deck on Learn with um, on Instagram. Um, we can refer you there, and they will do a good job for you. Uh, you can be rest assured. But this is very key as well. This stage is very important because this is the stage that will bring to live the training stage and the project stage. You know, if not, then. You just be wondering that ah, what happened? I can do this thing, but I'm not getting calls. You are not getting calls because you are not visible in the marketplace. All right. After the first, second, and third is done, then time to start preparing for interviews. Uh, sorry. Uh, time to start applying for jobs. You know, um, recruiters will start reaching out to you. You'll be bagging some interviews. And that is one of the things I'll assist you with as well, interview preparation. I'll assist you with interview preparation because at the end of the day, it's not really about the money uh, to me. It's, you know, uh, you being able to secure a role at the end of the day um, because I'm rest assured if you secure that role, someone somewhere will ask you, how did you do it? And you'll be able to refer, learn with pride that that is where you did your training. That is what is really important to me. So when it comes to interview preparation, sometimes I organize a panel interview, you know, um, it all depends on what the job spec is, but we go through that together and we'll see how we can tackle it together. After the job, um, yeah, yeah, so I just mentioned this one, interviews, and hopefully, after this one, uh, you can back that role and become a software automation engineer or software automation tester. This is these are just the sample automation roles out there. Um, got this from the internet. As you can see, this one is paying 60k uh, per annum. That is a lot of money. Uh, I have someone uh, who just started. Um, recently was it last week or two weeks ago probably if it's on the call later on i can call on him to actually testify to this amount that you are looking at so don't think you cannot do it don't think oh how can i get this i don't have the experience you being with us you are getting the experience and if i i, I haven't mentioned this as well for the duration you are with us as well we give you a reference so it's like you are working with us we we'll give you a reference um, 
just in case when you start applying for jobs and all of that. But this amount is doable. It is possible. And it is not meant for only those who has been doing it for donkey years. No. Uh, if he's online later on, I'll call on him to testify to that. And probably you can learn one or two things from his experience as well. But you can end this amount. This is another rule. This is a contract rule, praying 380 a day. Let's just round it up to 400. 400 a day is like 8,000 per month, you know? Contract can be three. They can say three month contract and you can be there for years. You can be there for two years, three years. Imagine getting 380 or 400 a day for two years. That is a lot of money, you know? And don't think you cannot get it. People getting it, they don't have two heads as well. All you need is your determination, your hunger for change. And, you know, for us to attain certain heights, we need to uh, kind of invest in ourselves, you know. The investment might look costly as, at the time, but by the time you start reaping the benefits of that, then you realize that, oh, thank God, I actually spent that money on my, I actually invested that money on myself, you know. Um, that's a sacrifice uh, that needs to be made as well. Um, so um, what you get um, on request, if you want certificate uh, of completion, you can actually get one. Uh, actually, at the moment, we are working towards our courses um, being certified um, by this body. So this is a recognized body um, that, and they are known in over 30 countries, Nigeria inclusive, Ghana inclusive. So we are working in partnership with them at the moment to make sure that um, all our courses are accredited as certified you know and at the end of the training as well um you get a certificate uh of you know completion with um with our logo and with their logo on that certificate as well and you can tender the certificate anywhere uh because it's recognizable as well uh, CV review uh, we we'll go through your CV to see uh if it needs revamping or not, you know? If it needs revamping, we'll let you know that, oh, it has to be done and all of that. If not, we just correct one or two things on it, then you are good to go. Uh, as I said earlier on, we provide you with a work reference, UK work reference, because the duration, the three month duration is like you are working for Learn with Pride or a subsidiary company as well. So we give you a reference for that duration as well. Part of your package is interview preparation as well. We help you to prepare for any interview you might be having. We provide that support as well. The support and mentorship are there as well. What are the tools that you are going to learn on this course? Uh, we'll be using Visual Studio as our ID, that is Integrated Development Environment. We'll be using C-sharp as our programming language. And the reason for choosing C-sharp is if you are trained on how to code in C-sharp, how to automate in C-sharp, then you won't have any problem if you are to encounter any programming language like Java, Selenium-based or non-Selenium-based like Cypress. You know, C C-sharp like, you know, back then, um, if you are learning how to drive, if, if you want to start learning how to drive, they'll tell you if you learn to drive with those, you know, old school Volkswagen, you know, because it's very hard to use to learn how to drive. They'll tell you if you learn how to drive with that car, there is no other car you won't be able to drive. Same thing as C-sharp. If you learn to code in C-sharp, you know, there, there is no other uh, programming language you will not be able to work on because C sharp seems to be the artist out there, you know? And don't think because you are, you are being trained on C sharp, don't think your first row will be on C sharp. Your first row might not be on C sharp. Your first row might be on Java. Your first row might be uh, even on non-Selenium based like Cypress. But because you have the knowledge of C sharp already, you will be able to scale through on all other ones. And that is the reason why I chose C-Shop. Uh, we'll be having a look at GitHub, 
postman, Azure DevOps. That's why the fact that the training is focused more on automation, but I still start from the very basics, which is manual testing. For manual testing, we're using tools uh, like Azure DevOps to do our test cases, to automate, uh, to run our manual test cases and all of that. So, because one of the key things important to me as well is being exposed to industry standard tools, you know, tools that are being used out there, not outdated tools. So that is why you'll be exposed to tools like Azure DevOps, C Sharp, Visual Studio, Postman, GitHub, you know, probably Jira, you know, uh, just to mention a few. So that is that about um, my shots. One second. Uh, oh. All right. So that is that about the roadmap. Quickly, let me go through the, the course outline. All right, I believe everyone, if you can see the course outline on my screen, can you please drop three on the chat? I just want to be sure. If you can see the course outline, can you drop three on the chat? All right, thanks. All right, so this is what we'll be covering. Um, it might look a lot, and I won't lie to you, it's a lot. But as I said, you have the support because when it comes to transitioning, the most important you should look out for is the support. Are you able to get the support on this journey? Will you be able to get the support? If you are stuck, because surely you'll be stuck. Surely you, you need help. You can't do without it. Only if you are not doing what you're supposed to do. That is when you, you won't need any help. And I'm, I'm expecting you to run into issues so that we can resolve it together. And as I said earlier on, the process of us resolving it together, that is when you learn. All right, so as I said, manual testing, we'll be going there because I cannot assume everybody coming on the training has got a testing background. So I still need to start from the very basics. And so that is why we we'll still be starting from manual testing, just that we won't be dwelling much on that, but it will be better for you to understand the genesis of what testing is all about. So we'll be going through manual testing, introduction to manual testing, exploratory testing, what is SDLC, that is software development lifecycle, uh, what is software testing lifecycle, you know, different phases that we have, and the tools that we'll be using for that is the Azure DevOps. So introduction to Azure DevOps, um, and this is another thing about tooling. Azure DevOps and Jira, perform the same function. So if you know how to use Azure DevOps, you know, even despite the fact that you haven't used Jira before, whenever, when you see Jira, you'll be able to cope on Jira because it's only a slight difference between both of them. And that's the same thing between C Sharp and Java as well, you know? So, um, so introduction to Azure DevOps, you know, how you can raise the defects and bugs using Azure DevOps, how you can move your tickets around on Azure DevOps, how you can create a task, how you can link your task, everything will be shown. You know, everything, you'll be exposed to everything. The question now to you is, will you be able to get your hands dirty or you want to complain, or oh, are you the type that give excuses that, oh, I do nine to five, I do eight to eight, I'm so tired, I've got family, I've got five kids. All these things will come your way. You cannot do without them. I understand everybody works. Most of us, probably some of us have got families, you know, challenges will be on the way. But it is you that you now know how to plan yourself. You know, when I was going through my own transition, same thing, I have to work because I want to change job doesn't mean I have to stop my previous work. No, I need to work. So that definitely daytime, I don't have time. You know, 
I've got kids as well. So that means I need to wait till midnight before I can practice anything. And I'll be on it. Sometimes I can be on it for three hours. Sometimes I can be on it for four hours, getting tiny sleep. But I don't mind. I don't mind because I know I have a, I have a purpose. I have a focus. I have a target. You know, I, I have that thing that I'm aiming at the, and I need to get. And if it will take my sleep for the next three months, then that is fine. As long as I get that thing that I'm aiming for, I'm fine with it. And as I said earlier on, the rest is a story today because I was able to achieve that. And I can only achieve that because I was so determined, you know? And that's what the fact that there wasn't any support. I have no one to go to that, oh, I'm having issues here, can you help me? No one, I had to do everything all by myself. But you have the support. The question is, are you going to make use of your support? Are you going to make use of every tools given to you? Are you going to get your hands dirty? You know, that's the question um, you need to ask yourself. All right, uh, then we'll be looking at, uh, after that software automation, you know, uh, as I said, we'll be using C Sharp as a programming language, you know, introduction to software automation, downloading and installing, Will be because C Sharp and Java, they are Selenium based. So we'll be using SpecFlow, we'll be using BDD, that is behavioral de driven development. You know, we'll show you how to set up your SpecFlow, how to use Gherkin keywords and all of that. And number four, setting up your framework. Number six, how you can locate your um, expert, different type of weight in Selenium you know, uh, using a page object, you know, because it is common in software automation questions. You won't miss it. They will ask you, have you built a framework from the very scratch before? We'll take you through everything. You know, it sounds heavy, but by the time we go through it, you actually see that, oh, there's really nothing much to, have you built a framework from the very scratch before? They'll ask you that question. You can't escape it. You can't escape it. Also, we'll be having a look at API testing as well using Postman, uh, you know, and Git 11. Because after you write your code on Visual Studio, it doesn't sit there. Sitting on your own local machine has no benefit to the business. So that means we need like a central repository where we can push that code and everyone else can have access to that code. And for us to be able to do that, we'll be needing uh, learning um, Git. How you can do your push, how you can different type of commands in Git, how you can clone a repository, you know, how you can push to your rep repository as well. So that is what the that is what the course outline looks like. Let me quickly take you through the journey of software automation itself. Before I call on, I think it's online now. Before I call on, um, you know, someone just to share his experience and how he was able to land a role. As I said, he just started this role probably a few weeks ago, probably like two weeks ago, and you know just to give you an idea of how much he's getting for his first row. Oh, quickly, so let's let's just go through um, these together, just for you to have, if you are coming on the course, you are still going to see this as well. So content for the automation testing. We'll be using, as I said, Selenium and SpecFlow. We, we'll be using Selenium um, uh, BDD, that is behavioral driven uh, development. We'll be using Gherkin language. You know, Gherkin language is just simple English language. So that, and the reason for using a Gherkin language is, you know, you might be a technical person, a tester, but remember you are working as part of a team. If you write your code, just using codes, that means it is only you or developer that can understand whatever you've written. But if you write your code in a simple English language, that means, 
every stakeholders on that project, if they are interested in knowing what you are doing, can understand your code because your code has been written in a simple English language, which is being referred to as a Gherkin language. So that is why the introduction of BDD, uh, uh, behavioral driven development, uh, it allows us for us to use BDD. That means uh, we are using Specflow, you know? So how to run our test in different browsers, uh, web driver commands, how to load, do locators and expert, you know? Uh, this, all, all these things might sound Greek to you, but that, that is all what we'll be learning on the journey. Uh, tools to be used, Visual Studio, Specflow, Selenium WebDriver, NUnit, NUnit Assertion, Gherkin, Azure DevOps, GitHub. We'll go through how to set up a framework, as I said, from the very scratch. Meaning, how to download and install your Visual Studio. And when it comes to automation, Mac, for those using Mac, it is not really fr uh, user friendly when it comes to automation. So I prefer uh, Windows, or even if you have Mac, if you can install Windows on your Mac, that is when you get the most benefit out of the automation. If not, uh, what you'll be seeing on your Mac will be different from what we are seeing on our Windows. You know, uh, because Mac is just any anything about Mac is just complicated. So the best is just to use Windows for it. So steps for setting up our test framework. Remember I told you, this will be a general of the most common question. Have you set up a framework from the very scratch before? And this is, this is where the journey starts. How you download and, in, and install your Visual Studio? How you integrate your spec flow extension with Visual Studio? How you create your first step? How you add your nugget packages? How you create your folder structure, your feature file, your step definition, your page objects, your hooks, it's like I'm rapping to some people that, what is this guy talking about? Don't worry. You don't need to know what I'm talking about because on the journey, you are going to understand all these terminologies because it is something that you'll be doing day in, day out, every single day. So there's no way, even if you don't want to know it, because you are doing it every day, you don't have a choice than to know it. You know, you won't, you won't have a choice than to know it. Uh, on page object, how you add your elements and method on step definition, how you call the page object method for the action to perform. And finally, how you run your test. All right, so introduction to test automation. Why do we do test automation? What is Selenium WebDriver? What is Specflow? And what is Visual Studio? So automated, automated testing saves time and money. Uh, it increases our test coverage. You know, what some, sometimes, uh, what we can cover with our manual testing, we can cover it through our automation testing. Um, it helps developers and testers. Automation does what manual testing cannot do. And it's most useful when we are performing what is being referred to as a regression testing. Regression testing manually, if you want to do regression testing, um, it depends on your test size, your test suite size. Sometimes it might take two days, three days manually to do it. But if you have all those scripts automated already, it's just a matter of hours, you know, probably just running your automate, automate, the automation suite uh, for probably two hours, three hours, and you have the results. You, you see how much time it saves before it takes you two, three days to do. But because you have a framework in place, you just press a button, run all your tests for you. And in three hours time, you already have the results. You know, that is very, very good. And that is why most organizations are moving towards automation. And that is the reason why uh, the demand for software automation tester or engineer is in high demand, you know. Um, so this is the best time that you can make that change. This is the best time you can uh make a when the sun still shines you know what is selenium web driver selenium web driver tool is used to automate web application testing to verify that it works as expected it supports many browsers such as firefox chrome ie and safari so that is selenium web driver what is specflow 
spec flow is a testing framework that supports behavioral driven development bdd you hear so much about bdd 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 it tells it lets us define application behavior in a plain meaningful english text using a simple grammar defined by a language called gherkin i gave you an example earlier on about you working as part of a team and the member the members of your team even your boss might not understand anything about automation you know but still he or she wants to understand what you are doing with the use of bdd with the use of gawking language that makes your test clearer and readable for anyone who is non-technical because you are only writing it in a simple english language an example will be an example of a gawking language using bdd will be given and navigate to a website when i click on um given i navigate to a website and i click on login button and i enter my username and i enter my password when i click on the sign up button then i should be able to log in successfully you can see everything i've i just said it's a simple english language using given when and then given is your precondition it's not the actual test you're performing but it's it's a road that will lead to where you are going and as well is your precondition it's not the actual test but you need it because it leads to where you are going as well when is the action that you are performing itself your when is the test that you are carrying out itself and the then the then clause is your assertion you want to assert you want to validate that this thing has actually been done truthfully all these things are what you are going to learn on the journey you know and that is spec flow for you anyway and what is visual studio microsoft visual studio is an integrated development environment i mentioned it earlier on ide it is used to develop computer programs as well as websites, web apps, web services, and web mobiles. Uh, Visual Studio includes a code editor supporting IntelliSense. It gives you suggestions as you are typing your code. It gives you suggestions of what you are trying to type, which makes things fantastic. So this is just a brief um, introduction to automation um overview to what you are going to learn on the journey if you are to come on board um you know just a roadmap generally um of what it what to stand to benefit as i said you have to be in it to win it uh you can't say oh i didn't i played i would have won that 200 million but you never played that means you will never win. You only continue to wish, you know? And one thing about us human beings is we procrastinate a lot, you know? Uh, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. And guess what? Tomorrow never comes. I'll enroll tomorrow. Uh, I'll enroll next week. I'll enroll next year, you know? But that next year never comes. Tomorrow never comes. Sometimes we find it difficult to spend money on ourselves to impact us positively. But when it comes to family member, anybody asking for money, ah, there's an emergency somewhere, we'll raise that money, you know? You don't know where. Well, but this will be a fantastic opportunity. Anyway, for the eight weeks, if you want to join the course, for the eight weeks training, the cost is actually uh, £5.99 for the project it's actually 300 pounds but because it's a new year uh there is a discount going on new year discount so you don't have to pay for the project so that is three that is 300 pounds off already and another thing i would do is if you are enrolling between now because it's starting next week saturday actually 
if you are enrolling between now and Wednesday, Wednesday next week, I'll give additional 100 pound off. So instead of 599, you only pay 499 for the entire duration. And you get the practical training, you work on a project with the rest of the team, you get the mentorship, you get the support. As I said, this is not another facilitator taking it on. It is me taking the process. It is me taking the course. You have access to me. Interview preparation, uh, reference as well is given to you. Um, certificate of completion, as I said, we are working to get all the courses accredited so that you can know that what we are delivering is actually top class and um, the partner that we'll be working with as well, which is CPD, you can you can check them out as well. And even our name is already on their website. You can check that out as well, just for you to know that we have a backbone and we are just not, you know, we put our money where our mouth belongs or how do they say that thing? We am confident about the quality of what we deliver, not only in software automation, but in every other courses that we do as well, be it business analysis, project management, um, we make sure that we build in that quality into it because it's the quality that matters. If you are able to secure a role at the end of the day, fantastic. That is what we want. And that is why we want to work the work with you. So if you are enrolling uh, aside the 300 discount off for the project, you don't have to pay for the project, I'll give additional um, uh, 100 pound off. So instead of 599 for the entire thing now, I'm going to do it for 499. Uh, but that can only, that is valid till Wednesday uh, for those that wants to enroll. Um, so that is it. Uh, without taking much of your time, I don't know whether Sean is online. Just to share his experience, uh, I'll take all questions at the end of, let me just quickly call him. Uh, after, after, his, uh, after him, I'll take all questions. You can raise your hand or drop your, drop your comments or your question in the chat box and I will call you. Uh, all right, so Sean, quickly, if you can just tell us your story and where you are now, uh, how you are able to do it, and you know, over to you. Hello, hello. Can everyone hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, perfect. So my name is Sheo. Um, Not too long ago, I was in the same position you were at, which is I wanted to change roles. I wanted to change jobs. I was tired of where I was working. I was from an housing background and I later moved into social care and I was not enjoying it anymore. I had risen to the top, but it wasn't paying enough. I tried going into project management, it wasn't happening. So someone mentioned software automation. And it's something that I'd heard about a long time ago, but I'd never bothered with it. So I signed up with ICANN, came for the introductory class, and I started the classes. I had basic knowledge of computers. I've been using computers for years, but I could only use them to do the basics, PowerPoint presentation, watch movies, respond to emails, just the basics. So my first class doing software automation, I found it difficult. I, I, it was, I was all over the place. So I ran away after a few weeks, but I came to realize that look, if I don't do this thing or I don't do something else, I'll be stuck in the same job. So I came back and I spoke to Aki and I, it made me realize a few things. One, my computer was not powerful enough. It was an i3, I needed something like an i5 or an i7. Then my Wi-Fi to our home was not powerful enough. So I changed it to fiber optic. And then I also made the conscious decision that, look, this thing needs time because I was working. So I'll go to work nine to five, come back home, six in the evening. I'm tired, but I needed to practice. It's, it's a language you're learning. You're learning c -sharp. If you don't practice that language, you forget it. It's like you knowing English. That's your first language. Then suddenly someone starts to teach you Spanish. If you don't find people you're speaking Spanish too often, you forget it. So I decided to be practicing every evening, every evening, every evening. And before I knew it, everything that was gibberish before started sounding like English. And then it started becoming my 
natural first language, which is Yoruba. So I, I understood it at my second attempt. And it was only because every time I go home from work, I'll go put my laptop on and I'll work at this thing two hours, three hours, sometimes four hours till midnight. And I was disturbing Aki a lot. So I also did the, um, I think the first two months of normal training, then I joined the live project. And for me, that live project was the game changer because that live project puts you in a live environment, like you're in an actual workplace. And then because you're doing classes every evening. So today you meet, you pick up a ticket, like you're at work, you do day stand-ups, you do all those things. And then tomorrow, that ticket you worked on, you have to talk about it. So any problem you've met or you've encountered, you and your team, you and everyone in the live project, you all work on it together. And that is how you learn. Working on your problem and working on your colleague's problem. That's where you start to know, oh, so this is how you resolve these issues. Okay, so this is what you write. Oh, so this is how you do this. So I got to that point that went to a few of my colleagues that were in the same class, they found jobs. I started as well. But for every interview I went for, I believed I was going to get the job. So every time I held an interview, it used to knock me down. So after doing about three, four interviews and I didn't get the job and they were tearing me apart, I gave up again. But later, I decided after some months that, look, it is this way or no way. So late last year, I decided, you know what, I'm going to start going for these interviews again. And this time I'm going to go for 66 interviews and I will record every single interview. And once I record it, if I get home, I'll take it to the experts, the Akins and everybody that know it and will discuss the questions I was asked, they would analyze where I went wrong, where I went right. So guess what? I did first interview. Of course, I didn't do well because you still, you're, you're shaky, you're scared. You will naturally be scared. So they told me the things I said wrong. So that means I'm going into my second interview stronger. So I went in second interview, I messed up again. They told me the things I got wrong because I recorded. So I'm going into my third interview stronger with more knowledge. So now, before you even ask me the questions you want to ask me, I'm already telling you the things I know you're going to ask me. So I did third interview, fourth interview, fifth interview. By the sixth one, even before you ask me, I'm already bragging you with all the words I've learned and all the stories I've learned. Because now I've learned to put my story together better. Because typically what they're going to first of all ask you is, how will you tell us? what you've been doing, the sort of things you've been doing and how you've been finding in general. That is always the first question. So from that first question, you can tell them everything they need to hear and they won't question you again. So you will learn it from going to multiple interviews. Anyway, to call a long story short, in December, I went for an interview. It went well, first stage. They put me to the second stage. It went well because Remember, I'd fallen down multiple times. So now I know what to say. He went to third stage, he went well, and I was offered the role. Now, for me, I never applied for a job that is more than 55K. Why? Because my mindset was they would stress me too much. Remember, I'm new to it. So I was looking for a soft landing. So I was applying for contracts and I was also applying for permanent. And when recruiters called me, I was accepting every offer of the interview. Sometimes I was doing three interviews in a day. I was interviewing inside my car. Yeah, because I was at work. There's no quiet place at work. So I'll take my laptop into the car and I'll go and interview in the car. Because I said it on my CV that I was still working. So I was doing multiple interviews a day. I was no longer shy. I was very confident and overread. Anyway, so I was applying for jobs. 55, 50K, 55, 50K. So this last one, the man asked me, how much do you earn where you're working now? And I told him 48. That's my standard life. I'm earning 48. That's why now I want 50, 55 from you guys. And the guy went away. When they came back to me, they offered me my basic salary is 62K. My complete package 
is 82 grand. And that's my first job. I started on the 16th of January this year. Now, I've been there two weeks now. I've not written one code. I've realized that my boss of boss of bosses that gave the final green light was my sec he interviewed me second. No, third. It's not technical. I was telling him last week that I want us, that they don't have video studio. We need video studio. He said, what do you need that for? I was like, really? I said, that's why I'm going to be writing my codes in C sharp. He said, eh, go and write, go and put together something. Just write like a business case for it and it will put it through. I was like, what? This guy that is my bossy, bossy boss. He does not know anything technical. The person that is my immediate boss, who's meant to be automating with me, we're all meant to go into work two times, three, two times a week. This guy doesn't come into work at all. No, nobody on my team has ever seen him at work before. So that's how flexible they are. What I'm saying is, what you see on the um, job role, job description, and for the interviews, when you get into the job, it is not the same. It is softer and more gentle. Maybe if you go into a contract role, they expect you to eat the ground running. But for permanent positions, they are chill. They will give you time to settle in. So my last two weeks, they call it onboarding. So they're just showing you their processes and they're showing you how they work. And they're telling you, listen, in this place, the developers already have a way that they're working. We do not want to upset them. So we'll take it easy. From what I've seen, I may not write a code for, the, for six months. So all I'm trying to say to you is be encouraged. This thing, you can learn it. Me, I didn't know nothing when I started it. But now I know it and I know it very well. And it's because of that constant practice, everyday practice. You'll be tired in the evening, but remember, you want to change professions. So let that, let that push you. Let that push you. You'll have to sacrifice TV. You won't have time to be watching TV in the evening. It's fine. TV is not running away. You will always be able to meet it later. By the time you know it, you won't need to practice so much. But the first thing is you want to know it. And it is very simple. Right now, when Akin was talking to you, I was listening. Everything was sounding like a lot. But now, because I know it, everything just sounds like English, normal English language. It is not a lot. It's just four basic steps you have to follow. That's it. And you keep following it, following it. I heard him saying, creating a framework from scratch. You think it's a big thing. It's as simple as open, opening up a box of cereal and drinking it before you go to work in the morning. So don't, don't, don't feel like it's a mountain to climb. It is not. I give you six weeks of constant practicing, everybody meeting in the evenings, doing that live project. Six weeks, you will be laughing. Yeah, you'll be writing codes within three weeks with ease, but you have to take your time and pay attention. That's all, and practice. So that's my story. Now, I'm living the life I wanted to live. <laughs> life, life is great. At work, we're only expected to come in two days a week. Three other days, stay at home. When you go into work, we have massaging chair. Your, mas your chair will be massaging you. Yeah. They expect you to get off and walk away from your desk every 45 minutes. No one is marking your time. No one cares what time you come in. No one cares what time you go. You manage your time yourself. Yeah. No one will ask you what day you're coming into work. No one will ask you what day you're working from home. That's how they are. And this place is in central London. We have snooker table at work. We have table tennis. We have everything. So while at work, my colleagues will tell our boss they're going to play snooker. Do you want to come? My boss will say, no, he's tired. During work, I'm just thinking, what? My old place. Let me try that nonsense with my boss now. They'll send me home on suspension. So it's a good profession to get into. It's it's um there's a skill gap there because it's technical a lot of people run away from it so that gives you an opportunity a lot of people don't want to do it because it's technical meanwhile there's no there's no big deal there you can learn it with ease so that's just all i wanted to share with you be encouraged you can do it
Yeah, thanks, Jim. Uh, I just, I brought him on board just to share, you know, his experience. Uh, because you, why sharing my slide, you'll be, you'll be wondering, probably saying to yourself, how come, how, how can that be possible? You haven't done the road before, you can get, how can you get 60,000? How can you get 300 a day? How can you can get you volume, please? Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. All right. So I, I said yes, I brought I, yeah I brought him on board just to you know share his experience because many people will be thinking when I share my slide that how can it be possible uh, you just completed a three months course or boot camp and you want to start getting that money you know but you you never know until you start applying you know as I said many people will argue with me that oh. You can never do automation. You must have been doing manual testing before you can do automation. Another lie from the pit of hell, you know? Um, so that is just, that's just it. It is doable. And it is doable because you have people that can support you. You have that support system. You are not alone on the journey, you know? You are not alone on the journey. Only if you are ready to do the work. The road is not going to be easy. I will not lie to you. Uh, it will come, it will, it will get to an extent that you start dreaming. You'll be sleeping, you'll be dreaming of code. That is standard. You know, that is another standard. You'll be dreaming. And that is good. By the time you start dreaming of code, that means, you know, your mind, everything about you, it's, you know, probably you, you've been trying to resolve an issue you couldn't and you went to bed, you know, you are dreaming of code. It happens often. So, but we are here to help you. That's just what I'm saying. And if you're ready to commit, in, commit into the process, you know, you have the you have the support system there. And not only you will you go through the practical training, there is a setup of you working in an agile environment, set up in such a way that you'll be working on a live project that they need to develop from scratch. The BA would do their own gathering of requirements. You know, the developer would develop based on the user story presented to them by the BAs. The developer would develop, the tester would test uh, using the acceptance criteria developed by the BA as well. You know, it's a complete setup and you can't go wrong with that. So yeah, if you have any questions, you can drop it on the chat. Or you can raise your hand and I will call on you uh, to ask your question. So if you have any questions, raise your hand. And as I said, it's going to be starting on the on the 4th of February. That's next week, Saturday. So uh, Kendi, you can unmute yourself and talk. You raised your hand. Hello, Kendi, are you there? Yes, I had the spinning meal. You are not. Your hand is not up. Yeah, yeah, I'm. I'm here. I'm here. Just my phone was just a bit difficult to unmute. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. So Hello. Good question, evening. Yeah. My question is that can the payment be made instrumentally? Ah uh, yes. Uh, so half payment is required to start. If you want to come on board, uh, all this required is half payment, and the other half can be paid uh, between uh, five to six weeks after you get on the course. So you can pay in two installments. All right, thank you. Thank you for the feedback, thank you. All right, no problem. Uh, Raph, is that, you didn't raise your hand up or you can talk and... Okay. Yeah, over yeah, to you. Uh, is... It's the same question I wanted to ask before on the payment, uh, mode of payment. Oh, all right. Yeah. As I said, you can, you can pay twice. Um, you can, just the half payment is required for you to get on the course and the other half will be due within five to six weeks. Uh, just before you get on the live project, the live, the balance will be due. All right, Maggie, you can unmute and talk. Hello, Maggie. If you are there, please unmute yourself and ask your question. All 
All right, Maggie is not there for now. Emma, can you okay. unmute and talk? So, how much is the payment in Nigerian Naira? So, how can someone make the payments? Uh, in Naira, yes, uh, there's a Nigerian account you can pay into as well. In Naira, uh, the after discount, oh, hold on. Let me get my one second, please. So in Naira is before discount is 500. So after discount, uh, you're paying 400. That's the Naira value. Latif, you can unmute and talk. Thank you, sir. Please, I want to ask, is the training going to be conducted mainly online or there's a physical uh, venue for the training? All right, uh, it's fully virtual, um, both the project and the practical training. And the reason being that I'm sure 99% of us that wants this transition, you want to be able to get a remote job. I'm sure that is the aim of everyone. Um, yes, for, you to, for you to be able to get a remote job, then the best way to practicalize that would be you going through the virtual training and even on the project, working remotely because your team might be in India, some of your team might be in Switzerland, you'll be working remotely with everyone. So you need to, be, you need to get used to all these online stuff, but it's going to be a live class online. It's not a pre-recorded one. It's going to be a live class. Um, yeah, but everything right. will be virtual. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Um, any other question, please kindly raise your hand. If you have any other question, kindly raise your hand. Let me go through the chat. If you have any concern you want to ask, please kindly raise your hand and I'll call you Ralph. You can unmute and talk. Okay, yeah, the question I want to ask is, uh, you know, the, you said uh, it's going to be once in a week, right? For the training, but once the project yeah. starts, projects will be an everyday thing. Okay, the training is going to last for eight, eight weeks, right? Yes. Okay, it's after the training we start the project, or maybe alongside with the with the training. Um, it might be like fifth week into the training you start on the project. Fifth or okay. sixth week into the training, yeah. But before you get on the before you start on the project at all, you must have done the the critical path, which for the automation, and 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 I must have ensured that you can do the automation before I put you on the project anyway. So let's just say six week because uh the other guys you'll be working as well, working with as well, they are all coming from different training as well. Like the BA is coming from its own training. The Scrum Master is coming from their own training. You know, everybody is coming from their own different training to form that team. I think the only people who are not trainers, who are not students, will be developer, your developer, uh, probably your product designer. Yeah, those ones are not students. But like the BEs, they are coming from another training, the tester from another training. Uh, the scrum master from from another training, the project manager from another training. So everybody now come together to work towards uh, an objective. No, okay. Another thing again is that you said that you are going to handle this uh, training by yourself. Yes, for this software automation, I'm the one facilitating it. So you have access okay. to me twenty four seven. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's good. That's good enough because uh, there are some people that will tell you that they are going to take uh, the, the, the the training alongside. They will okay. I'm busy. Maybe they no. will not assign another person to take no. the responsibility. 
No, for my, this is my baby, you know. Uh, Learn with Pride was born from this training, you know. So it's still very dear to me. And, you know, I don't take it for granted. So I still take that, it. I still take it myself. That is the reason why I am interested because I, I want to have a first-hand uh, information for me practicing a person on the job already. Yeah, that is, you have no problem when it comes to that. So, yes, you can be rest assured. I am the one that will be taking the course and no one else. Uh, for the entire okay. duration, and you have access to me anytime you want to have access to me. Okay, Aki, one thing, one more thing. Do you have a, a, a discounted or maybe a kind of a, a referral? If one uh, have a referral to you? Yes, uh, <laughs> yes, yes, we do. Yes, uh, we actually do. Uh, for every referral, you get five percent. Okay. Yeah, that is based. If that is if they enroll, though, you get five percent of the total okay. amount. Okay, okay. That, that, that is good, that's nice to hear. Yeah, we get it, yeah. Okay. No that's my, that is my, my question, and uh, I think I... Uh... All right, that's fine. Thank you, Ralph. Uh, Ken, you can unmute and ask your question, Ken. Um, hi, I can... Um, Hello, so Ken. my... Yeah, can you hear me? Loud and clear, yes. Oh, great, great. Uh, my question um, is really a funny one. I think I've asked this question before, but I just need you to like, be able to like encourage, like I, I think it's more of an encouragement to me because I've been learning um, Java uh, with Selenium as the IDE and all, I'm um, sorry, Eclipse with IDE. Um, yeah. I just want you to be able to help me to expatiate more on how switching to C Sharp and Visual Basic, you know, how easily, how easy I can, I will be able to integrate with it if I'm switching to C Sharp and, and as the as a language. You just have to erase that you know anything. If you come with, right. if you come with the mind, let me tell you, it will make it will make sense. If you come with yeah. the mind that you don't know anything before, right? Forget that, yeah. oh, I've started on Java, you know. Um, yeah. Now I want to do C Sharp. If you have that mindset and you come on, because I tell you, you coming on C Sharp journey with me doesn't mean your first role will be on C Sharp. Don't get that wrong. Don't get that twisted. No. Your first role might be on Cypress. Your first role might be on Java. But the reason why C Sharp will be of benefit to you is it is add. And if you can learn it, then you'll be able to survive on other ones. If you forget that you start learning Eclipse or Java on Eclipse and all of that, you get to a point on C Sharp that you, you start noticing that, oh, this is looking familiar with what I know on Eclipse. You know, it's going to look yeah. familiar. I told you, um, the only difference between Java, C Sharp, it's mostly has to do with when you are setting up the framework from scratch. When you are setting up Java from scratch, it is entirely different to when you are setting up uh, C Sharp from scratch. That is the only thing. But as long, once the framework is set up, your writing of codes, your automation, it's similar. And many of my students, that's why the fact that they are trained on C Sharp, that doesn't mean the role they settle for at last is C Sharp. It's, they might get a Java role, they might get a Cypress role, and they employ them. Why? Because they believe that if they actually can do C Sharp, they don't need to put Java, they don't need to put Cypress on their CV, because they know if they can actually automate in, in C Sharp, then they will be able to cope on Java or they'll be able to cope on uh, Cypress or whichever programming language uh, that might come your way. And that is a thought process. Uh, I can give myself as an example, my second role, when I wanted to change role after my first, my first role that I got was C Sharp, uh, but it got to a stage that I wanted to change it. So I started applying and I was shortlisted for this uh, interview. Left to me, I don't want to go because it was a Java role. At that time, I never knew much difference between Java and C Sharp. 
reluctantly I went, you know? And one thing is I don't lie on my CV, you know? Not that I put Java on my CV, no. I didn't put Java on my CV. And they asked me, have you used Java before? I told them, no, I've never, but I'm always willing to learn, and you know, um, if they give me the chance. To them, they know that, oh, this guy said he has been working on C Sharp. But me, you know, I just thought probably Java was something totally different from what I know. And so I left after the interview, reluctantly. I never, you know, I wasn't serious about that interview because I already thought to myself they won't take me because I don't have Java, I don't have Java experience. And two weeks after they called me that, you know, I got the role. And it was when I now started working on Java that I realized that Java is really, 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 really simple. You know? But as at that time, I didn't know them, I didn't know much difference between them. So that is why I chose um, if you can know C sharp, then C sharp is seen like, you know, the master of them all. And if you can learn that, then even mm -hmm. if you get a Java role it will still make sense to you. You'll be able to cope only a few things that will be different from them. Well, um, okay. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. No problem. No problem. Any other question from anyone before? If you want to get in touch, I'm sure uh, one of my people has dropped the WhatsApp uh, group our WhatsApp group on the chat. You can join and you can message any of the admin on that WhatsApp group. Uh, if you have any other question you want to ask, you can message any of the admin. I will respond to you as well. Uh, so you can join the WhatsApp group. The link is on the chat. If you want to join, you can join. Please. All right, please the price in Naira is not clear. The original price is 500, but after the discount is 400. That is what I meant. So the original price without the discount is 500, 500,000. But after the discount is 400, but only half payment is due to start and the other half can be paid um, in five to six weeks time, just before you start on the project. Can we have the link to the WhatsApp group? Okay, I will paste the link again. Uh, yeah, that's the link on the chat now. So if you want to join, you can use that to join. So any other question before we call it a day, a evening, and any final question from anyone, if you want to ask your question, you can raise your hand. And as I said, the journey will be starting on Saturday, this coming Saturday. And that will be for the next three months. It will be a three months journey. Um, so if you are coming on board, come determined, come prepared, and come with a lot of expectation. It's, it might not be an easy ride, but surely you have all the support to overcome any, any challenges that, that might come your way. And at the end of the three months, you'll be surprised where you, you know, where you find yourself or with the amount of things you must have learned at the end of that three months. You won't, be, you, you won't, you won't, you won't believe it yourself because you are not learning even only the coding even how to work as part of a team, you know, how to work as part of your agile team, your learning, how to deal with your developers, your product owner, your scrum master, you know, you are working as part of a team. So if they ask you any question regarding agile, you know, it won't be any issue for you because you can tell them, you can tell them all the agile rituals because you are doing it. So you don't need to lie on your CV because it's something you are doing how to do your daily, how you do your daily standards, how you do your sprint planning, how you do your sprint refinement, your sprint retrospective, and what each and all of them stands for. You know, you'll be able to defend it without any problem. Dennis, you can unmute and ask your question. Yes, um, I wanted to ask, um, 
Do you have another schedule uh -huh. for the training? Apart from, uh, you know, you're starting on the fourth, but you have another schedule in okay? case so you're not ready to start uh, on the fourth. Billy? Yeah, Good. that would be. That would be because I do this myself. So before I can run any other one, that will be after eight weeks. You know, after eight weeks, then you are free from me because you're on the project now, working with the rest of the team. So before thinking about any other court, that will be probably like 10 weeks. 10, that will be around, I don't even know, probably like March ending or thereabout. March ending or first week of, first week of April or thereabout, I think, if I'm right. Yep. Yeah. Okay, thanks. No problem, no problem. Any other question from anyone before we call it a yes. day? Hello, good evening, Akin. Yeah, Adeshola, good evening. Yeah, um, as a follow-up question to what the last um, person said, um, you said that the next batch will probably be in March. Is it possible for some of us that are currently engaged with some other things to lock into this and then join the next batch of training? Is this something doable? When you say lock into this, how do you mean? Okay, um, I think the commitment to get on board or to subscribe for the training is by paying 50%, if I'm not... Yeah, okay. that's, that's right. That's what I mean. But you don't want to join this batch? Yeah, because um, especially as at that time, I also have um, another session. Um, I'm currently studying and I have one of my course scheduled for that weekend. So I'm seeing how it will be, um, it won't be clashing with what I'm currently doing, but it's something I really want to do. Yeah, chat me up privately then, then we can see how we can go about that. All right, if awesome. if it can be doable, because as I said, as I told you, the original price for this is actually 900 pounds. Because for the chain itself, you might say it's expensive. It's expensive because I know the quality I'm going to put into it for you to succeed. That is why. Uh, and it's one of the, my most expensive costs because I undo it myself, actually. Um, so the original price actually meant to be 900 pounds for the journey itself. Um, I gave 300 pounds off for the project um, just because it's New Year. But I can for now i can't guarantee that will be the same thing um from the for the next cohort you know but you can chat me up and we okay. can talk we can talk about it uh just oh. join the group chat and chat uh any of the admin up all right thank you so much you're welcome how much is the cost um i just answer that question now the original cost the training the eight weeks training is 599 the project you going on the live project is 300 pounds but i'm giving the 300 pounds off as discount so you don't need to pay for that and also only half payment is required to start and the other half can be paid uh within five to six weeks I hope that has answered that question as well. Uh, any final word from anyone? Any final question uh, that you want to ask? Uh, if not, please reach out to any of the admins if you've joined the WhatsApp group already. And we'll be more than happy to answer any questions, take any queries and all of that. In the absence of no questions, thank you all for you know, listening to my blabbing for the last one and a half hour and hope to see you on the journey. It's going to be, it's going to be worth it. It will be a money well spent, you know. Um, I can't say much until you join and see what it actually entails, you know. So until then, thanks. Take care of yourself. Be safe and have a lovely evening, everyone. Thanks and good night. Thank you. Good night. All right. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night.